Hey everybody, my name is Dana Mooney, Licensed Mental Health Counselor with Intertrek LLC, and I want to welcome you to the first episode of Therapy Questions. This is just a little web series I'm putting together to answer questions I get a lot as a therapist and just put some good info out there. So today our question is, how do I find a therapist? Uh, this is one that I get a lot, a lot, a lot uh, from family, from friends, and from, from people that are calling me that are outside of my area. Um, so I'm going to talk about this in three different categories. So first is the people that have insurance. Uh, my second category is people that have insurance and don't want to use it and they want to do private pay or uh, you don't have insurance and you need to pay out of pocket for a therapist. My third category is people who want to have therapy but they just don't have a whole lot of money to pay for it. So I'm going to talk about resources for all three of these categories. First one, my insurance folks. Uh, my recommendations are going to be pretty obvious. The first one is just going to go to the website, go to your insurance website, and a lot of times they have a little thing where you can pop in your zip code and it'll give you a list of therapists. Now, I want to discourage you from just picking that first therapist in the list. Uh, it can be so so uh, tempting to just be like, ah, your Sally Sue is 0.2 miles away. She's going to be my perfect therapist. And like, yeah, maybe she will. But... I want to encourage you to check out your therapist, like really do some research to figure out if this is going to be the right one for you. You can do that by going on their website. You can call them, have a conversation with them, hear their voice, hear how the conversation flows. Do you gel with them? And the reason that this is important is because the number one predictor for people getting better and getting benefit from therapy is the therapeutic relationship, how well the people gel how well the therapist and the client gel and so this is a really really important step because this this is you investing your time and your energy and your money into your mental health and so this step is super super important screen figure out which is the right one okay so we got our insurance people here now we're going to move on to the middle crowd which is the people who are going to be paying out of pocket for therapy the first thing we want to address is why would somebody have insurance and then pay out of pocket for therapy? So this might be for a lot of reasons. Um, one is maybe they are not finding what they need in that little list on their website. Maybe they're needing a specialty that's outside of that and they need a, a broader range of people to search from. And that's totally fine. Also, some people uh, don't want to deal with the hassles of kind of like jumping through the hoops of the regulations with the insurance company. So certain regulations are uh, restrictions on the number of sessions that you can have with your when you're using insurance. Also restrictions are uh, some insurance companies don't cover things that they consider extra like group therapy or maybe you're having a rough time and you need a double session that week or maybe you need two sessions that week because it, it's really really hard and insurance companies don't don't cover that stuff. Phone sessions they don't cover. So, um, yeah, so some people just don't really want to bother with that stuff. The third one, which is a little bit uh, scary, is privacy. So a lot of people want to make sure that their information is protected. And, and when an, a therapist sends information to the insurance company for reimbursement, a lot of people don't know they have to put down a diagnosis. And once that information is sent from the therapist's office, to the insurance company, the privacy piece is out of their hands. It's up to the insurance company to protect that information. Now, uh, anybody in the insurance company can see that information. Uh, now, also, anybody who's auditing that insurance company can see your private information. Also, having a mental health diagnosis sometimes impacts decisions about being able to obtain life insurance. Sometimes having a mental health diagnosis uh, can impact decisions about hiring decisions for high security clearance jobs. So this is something that a lot of people consider when they're thinking, do I want to use my insurance or not? Okay, so we're in this middle category. You're paying out of pocket. You've decided I want a therapist and I just don't know how to find one. So the first place I usually send people is psychologytoday.com. Uh, this is kind of like a, a website. It's almost like a, a dating website for your therapist. Not that you would ever date your therapist. Don't ever do that ever. But <laughs> what I mean by that is you go on the website and you can really narrow it down by what you're looking for. You can narrow it by location. You can narrow it by gender. You can narrow it by specialty 
or uh, just lots of different ways that you can narrow down what you're looking for. And uh, what I would I would still encourage: go to the website, call, uh, do all the the hard work <laughs> to make sure that it's a good fit. I promise it will be worth it. Um, also, a lot of people don't think about calling or talking to their friends and their family and just asking, hey, who, who do you like? Who is your therapist? Do you, have you heard of anybody in the area? Because chances are, if they have a therapist that they really like and they really get along with, you're probably going to like them and get along with them too. So, so use your network as a way to find a therapist. Okay, so we're going to move on to this third category. The third category is people who uh, want to get into therapy, but they don't have a lot of money to pay for it. I'll send you to uh, to call 211. 211 is a national mental health hotline, and they help with uh, suicide prevention, but they also help with giving mental health referrals. And so you can call them just like you call 911. You call 211, and you can let them know what's going on. You can let them know where you're at, uh, what location you're at, and and hey, by the way, I don't have a lot of money to pay for therapy. And they will give you a big old list of community resources that are available. And those community resources often will have a sliding scale fee, a very low fee, or even no fee for therapy. So, so check that out first. Uh, another resource I send people to is openpathcollective.org. And this is a website a lot like Psychology Today where you can narrow down the, by specialty and location. But it, it only... It only includes therapists that offer a sliding scale. And so that way, these therapists are people that you know are committed to making sure that people can access mental health services even if they don't have a lot of money. I'm on there. Um, so check out that website, openpathcollective.org. There is a small fee, I think, to, to be able to actually connect with a therapist. I think it's like $49 for your whole lifetime membership. Uh, which I think is really reasonable. But if you connect with a therapist on there, your fee is only going to be anywhere from $30 to $50. And you can negotiate that with the therapist when you get there. So, and again, still, still be choosy. Still go to their website, call them, talk with them, and see if it's a good fit. Everybody deserves to make sure that they have a therapist that they can trust and get along with. Um, so, these are my three categories. I went over all of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the resources in the description so you have those. If you have questions for me that you want me to answer, you can put them in the comments. You can submit them on my website in the submission form at intertrekllc.com. Or you can email me directly at intertrekllc at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching. And again, my name is Dana Mooney. And I'll see you next time. Be well.